Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here. In this episode of Zig Master, we're going to be continuing our conversation about the different struct types in Zig and their layout in memory. In this case, we're going to be talking about the packed struct. Um, we saw that the native Zig struct type doesn't um, offer any guarantees about the layout in memory, and that allows it uh, the compiler to rearrange fields if necessary, to reduce padding, and, and to uh, try to obtain the, the most efficient use of the space of memory. Um, we saw that the extern struct um, is, is ideal for interoperability with C, and it complies with the CABI for the, the target that you're compiling to, and it, it guarantees that memory layout as specified by the CABI and it, it will not rearrange the, uh, the order of the fields. And in the case of the packed struct, um, it, it also guarantees uh, a memory layout where the fields are in the order uh, as specified in the definition of the packed struct. So, it, so the compiler will not rearrange the fields. And um, it will not uh, insert padding in between the fields. Um, it will insert padding after uh, the last field if it's necessary to reach the, the alignment of the struct itself. But the pack struct is going to behave as if it were uh, a single integer in memory. Okay, uh, It has a special behavior when compared to the other struct types. And, and the idea uh, behind the, pa the, the pack struct is that you can use it um, to create uh, structures like, for example, bit fields for flags, configuration options, and things like that. And you can uh, cast from a pack struct to integer types directly. And, and, and we'll see an, an example of that uh, further down in the video. Uh, basically using the bit cast built-in. But for now, I have here a pack struct, basically with the same fields as we saw for the normal zig struct and the external struct. We have here a, b, and c. We have a u8, a u32, and another u8. And in main, we're just uh, creating an instance here, uh, s1, and we're passing that to our layout function, which will print out the information for that. Um, so if we go here and build and run it, you're going to see that the pack struct, the size is eight. So once again, uh, it's, it's, uh, achieving a pretty efficient use of memory as, as the same as the zig struct, the native zig struct, both are more efficient than the extern struct, which used, uh, 12 bytes. And, uh, here we see that the alignment is eight. Okay. And um, if, if we, let's go back here to the struct itself. Um, the largest alignment here in, the, in terms of the fields is four, but since the pack struct is gonna be treated in memory basically like, like one uh, single integer, um, we would be having that, we would be adding up, okay? Uh, the, the alignments of all the fields, so in this case, um, we have alignment one uh, plus alignment four is five plus alignment one is six. And since alignment has to be a power of two, then the, the next alignment that would uh, accommodate uh, an alignment of six would be eight. Okay, so that's what we're seeing here. Uh, this pack struct will have an alignment of eight. And we'll see that the fields are in order. We see here that the offset for field A is zero, uh, field B has offset one, and field C has offset five. And that's in accordance uh, also with the addresses. We start here ending in nine zero, here nine one, and then uh, since this uh, it's a U32 occupies a size of four, four bytes, the next field C is gonna be at nine five, okay? And, um, uh, as a curiosity, you're going to see that the alignment for each of these fields is zero, okay? And this is a hint to how a pack struct is treated specially uh, by the compiler. The compiler is going to be handling this um, in, in a special way. And as I said, it's basically a, as if it were uh, a single integer in memory. 
and the alignment for that integer in memory is going to be 8. Okay. Now, let's go back here to the code. I want to demonstrate how, um, as I mentioned, you could, you could use, let's change this. Let's say that this is two U3s and uh, a U2. Okay. So in total, we have here uh, three bits plus three bits is six bits plus two bits is eight bits. Okay. So it basically, this pack struct in total um, would be one byte. And uh, this is another uh, strong point in, in which the combination of the pack struct and the fact that in Zig you can have uh, integers of arbitrary bit width, as you can see here, a U3 and a U2. In that combination of arbitrary bit width for integers and the pack struct is really a powerful combination when it, when, when it comes to uh, the type of use case that I'm going to demonstrate now. And let's see here, for example, um, let's uncomment this code right here. What we have here is that we are um, defining here in bits, and it's we're saying that it's indeed a U8, so this is just a single integer, a byte. And we are defining here using the binary notation for, uh, for an integer literal, basically the bits that we want for our final uh, packed struct. So here, for example, um, since we're dealing in a little Endian, uh, in my case, a little Endian machine, we would have that uh, field C would be coming first. So I am uh, these uh, three bits, uh, excuse me, these two bits would be for field C. So basically we'd be setting field C to the value three because 11 um, in binary is equal to three. And the next three bits, okay, would correspond to field B. And in this case, once again, we have 11 here, so we're setting B to three also. And the next three bits would correspond to field A. And this, in this case, we have 101, and this would be equal to five. So we're setting field A to five. But um, that's when we do the actual bit cast operation. But here we're just defining a normal U8 integer. Okay. Now we're going to be using this built-in uh, bit cast on those bits on that integer, and bit cast is going to uh, convert to the target type, which is going to be S here. That's the type of our packed struct, and we are assigning this to the identifier S2. So if you've had any experience with bit fields or, or, or bit, bit flags that in, in languages like C, you know that this single operation here, bit cast, of converting those bits to the struct is uh, achieving quite a lot. It's doing a lot of heavy lifting here because you would have to go field by field and uh, do uh, a lot of bit shifting operations to assign the different parts of this integer to the different fields of the struct. And this is all happening here with just one call to bit cast. Okay. And then what we do, we're going to print out the values of those fields. So um, let's do this here. We have more space here. And when we build and run, we see that indeed we have that A has the value five, B has the value three, and C has the value three also. So as you can see, this is a really powerful combination, uh, being able to define uh, an integer and then cast it to a pack struct. And uh, we can do vice versa, as we will see in our next example. And, and that next example, I wanted to show you a more real world situation. So we have um, here, I'm importing uh, from this file protocol.zig, and, and it, this would be a namespace protocol. And let's take a look at that. This is from another project I was working on a while back, basically defining uh, like, a, like a protocol for, for UDP messaging. And don't worry if you don't have much experience on, with networking. Uh, the important part of this is uh, the, the part that deals with, indeed, how we can use pack structs 
um, in, a, in a real world scenario. Here, I, I'm basically defining a header, okay? And that header is going to be encoded as, a, as an integer when we're sending it over the network. And then when we receive it, we can uh, convert that conveniently to our packed struct type, okay? So uh, we have uh, the different uh, parts of the header. Uh, first of all, we're defining here a couple of constants to know basically based on the details of the UDP protocol, how much space we're going to have left for the, for the header and for the data. And here is where we start defining uh, our packed struct. But first, we are defining here an enum uh, called code because one of the fields of our struct is going to be this code. Uh, we haven't talked about enums in this series in detail, but basically an enum is just that. It's an enumeration of different values. These values behind the scenes are assigned an integer value. Okay. Um, here, uh, this enum basically has only two uh, fields. It's, one is ping and the other is get. So the two codes that we have in this protocol are just ping and get. And here, finally, we start our pack struct. And we have this comment here that basically uh, dictates the, the layout. Uh, we're dedicating four bits uh, for the version. We're de dedicating four other bits for the code. We're going to dedicate 28 bits for uh, the sequence index or, or the, uh, the order of the, which index this datagram is in all of the datagrams that are being sent. And uh, another 28 bits for the total data datagrams that are going to be sent. And in total, we have 64 bits. Okay. Now we have uh, a couple of variables here, a couple of constants. Uh, I'm going to define here that the type, basically the, the backing type of this pack struct is going to be a U64. And this is going to come in handy for conversions uh, or casting. We're going to do the bit cast. And we have here um, a, a len uh, uh, constant, which is basically the, uh, using the built-in size of, of that type that we're defining here. So this is basically uh, a convenience for if later on we want to change the structure of this pack struct, we just change the type here and uh, the len value will update accordingly. Here we have our first field version. It's indeed a U4 taking up four bits. We have our code, which is that enum. It's going to take up four bits also. Here we have a U28, which is going to be the total. And our index is also a U28. And here is the really interesting part. We're going to define here a method that's called read. And what we pass in to read is just a slice of bytes. Here we have a slice of constu8. And we're going to be returning an instance of this struct type header. And how are we going to do that? Well, um, we have here our, our friendly bitcast uh, built in. And we're going to perform that bitcast. Remember, we want to, uh, we have bytes and we want to convert that to our um, header type. So that's what the bitcast is going to be doing. So we want to read, and we have in the stud mem namespace, we have a read int uh, function, which will read an integer uh, from a slice of bytes. In this case, we specify our target type. Um, um, not really the target type, it's actually the type of the integer that we're expecting in those bytes. Okay. And uh, here are uh, the slice and we have to uh, be precise in uh, precisely the, the bytes that are going to make up this uh, integer type. So that's why we are using our len constant that we defined earlier. Um, in this case, that would be the size of a U64. So we're going from zero to that size. And finally, we are specifying here dot big, which is the endianness of the architecture. Okay. Um, it, 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 it doesn't have to match the endianness of the architecture uh, that you're on. Uh, what it does have to match is that when you are encoding or decoding using bitcast and using uh, mem read int or mem write int, 
you have to use the same endianness when you're reading a specific uh, set of bytes, okay? In this case, I'm using big because traditionally when we're dealing with network traffic and protocols, we use a uh, big endian um, ordering, byte ordering, okay? And here we go the other way around. We have this method called write. We are basically using self here, which is of type header, a, a packed struct type. We are given a buff, and this time it's a slice of u8. As you can see, it doesn't have the const, so that means that we can write to this, uh, to these bytes, to this slice. And we're not retaining, returning anything because we're just writing, basically uh, converting here. So we do a mem uh, from the stud mem namespace, a write int. This time we want to write that integer. The type is going to be the same. We're going to be writing a u64 in this case. And once again, we specify exactly to which bytes we want to write that integer. And then here we do the bit cast of self. Um, this field basically is expecting the integer that we want to write as bytes. So the bit cast is going to convert our instance of header into a U64. So then it can be written out by write int. And once again, we're using uh, big here as the endianness. So these two lines, once again, um, they are doing a lot of heavy lifting because if you had to do this uh, type of encoding or serialization yourself, uh, you would have to, once again, be doing quite a bit of bit shifting for each of the fields uh, to convert from this pack struct to an integer and back again, okay? So comment all of this, okay? So what we have here is going to, we're going to be creating an instance of our header type here in uh, H original. We are uh, specifying that the version is zero, uh, specifying that the code is going to be get, specifying that the index is the first one, so it's zero, and the total is one, so we're just going to send one packet. And then we print out, okay, uh, that uh, instance. Then we create here a buffer for our uh, bytes. And we use the write method on our header to write to that buffer the uh, bytes that would correspond to uh, that integer, uh, which is ba the, the backing integer of this pack struct. Then we are defining here another constant called received. So we could uh, pretend that we received from the network uh, a series of bytes. And we're going to use our read method to read those bytes, in this case, uh, the buffer here. And we're going to print out what we obtain from that operation. So if we go back here, build and run this. As you can see, we have here our original header and our receive header, so the original was written to the buffer, the receive was uh, read from the buffer, and with the help of bitcast, you can see that we have the values, they are correct, we have the version 0, the code is indeed get, and uh, the total is 1, and the index is 0, okay? So, um, this is... Uh, in a, a real-world example of how you would use a pack struct uh, in combination with uh, arbitrary uh, bit width fields, uh, integers, and uh, as you can see, it's a really, really powerful and handy tool in the Zig uh, tool chest. Okay, so with that, uh, that's basically all I wanted to cover when dealing with pack structs and their memory layout. I hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.